Hello and welcome to The Real Hustler. My name is James and in today's show, we're gonna be taking a look at our first NFT and how to buy them. And welcome to The Real Hustler. So, like I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at our first NFT today and I am so excited. Now, we've talked about the history of the web but NFTs, uh, the next generation of being able to now own stuff in a digital form. And that's quite exciting because we've not really been able to do this up until now because of things like how do we know if it's genuine? How do we sign it? There's just like so many questions. But one thing the blockchain really does enable really well is us being able to own digital assets in ecosystems. And one of those ecosystems is where I want to take us today. Now, I was watching a show a few weeks back and it was a big blockbuster event and it was for UFC. If you're not familiar with UFC, it's mixed martial arts and let's just say I'm a huge fan and Paddy Pimlet is like someone I really admire. Um, he's really out there. He's a local lad um, up and coming who really does look like he could be the next McGregor. Uh, and he even called himself the cash cow. It's so exciting at the moment because even a sport like UFC has actually started to embrace uh, the blockchain uh, and they've even got all sorts of things like sponsorships and various different things. So let's not talk anymore and let's go and have a look. Want to join us on the cutting edge? Then please consider subscribing to our channel by hitting the subscribe and bell buttons to be among the first to be notified. So welcome to my desktop. And as you can see at the moment, I actually have something set up ready for us to look at. But just before we actually go into buying our first NFT itself, I just want to explain a bit more about Panini because some people might think, who's Panini? And if I mention that those football stickers used to get as a kid. Well, the people behind that is Panini and these are the cards that you can actually buy. Now, these are still stickers. These aren't NFTs, so don't get too excited just yet. Unfortunately, the Premier League seems to be a little bit lacking behind. Actually, just generally the UK is when it comes to these NFTs, because when I look at other areas, such as La Liga. La Liga are doing great. Look at this. La Liga have some NFTs and if you're a follower of Spanish League then definitely come and have a look at this because you can start to actually get these trading cards. Unfortunately Messi's not in that league anymore so that, that's kind of you know big person for me and Ronaldo as well like you know t two of the world's greatest football players no longer in this league so for me it's kind of depreciated the value. So there's like plenty of opportunity in this. And what are trading cards? Well, trading cards are a big thing in the United States. There's a big aftermarket where people can turn over those cards. So they buy them at one price, hold on for them a certain amount of time, and then they might sell them on a bit later on. Now it's called flipping essentially, or that's certainly what um, I've heard it being termed as. And in that flipping, it, you might go to, I don't know, car boot sales. And this is a, a popular thing as well in the States where people will maybe buy these in, in bulk from people who may have passed away and other people who it doesn't mean or hold any significance to them. They then sell those in car boot sales. Uh, the people who buy them are buying them at like floor cost, which is normally the lowest cost you'll ever see a card. But even then, they'll probably buy, be, be buying it below the floor cost because the they person selling it won't be aware of the actual true like retail value of it. And these cards that could be like, I don't know how old they are, but I've heard stories of cards being bought for pennies or certainly cents in, in America and then being retailed or flipped over uh, and making thousands of pounds. Now, in this regard to this NFT, firstly, this is the, um, the, the the NFT for La Liga. So if you wanted to look at getting an NFT in La Liga, then certainly this would be an option for you. Now, we're not gonna go into the Football Liga because that's not what we're here to do. 
we're going to take a look at what my passion is. And I just thought I'd show you some of the cards that I actually already have. Now, this is the second time I've actually shot this, this actual whole program, <laughs> because unfortunately that is the reason why we delayed the show. So this Leon Edwards, oh yes, I can't um, wait to like show you how you get these cards. But when you look at the retail market or, or the resale market, this is the re resale market. Now the resale market is how you, if you were actually doing this to earn money, then what you'd be looking to do is get your stack of cards and hope that you get something super rare. Now, um, this particular card is just a common card, so it's pretty worthless, as you can probably see. The top sale price is $2, which, yeah, that's, that's really low. It's probably one of my worst cards, if I'm honest. The floor price is $1, recent sale $1, average price $1.2 to seven dollars 318 collectors have it 42 people are listing the card at the moment to resell it and unique sellers are 15 so you can see there's quite a few duplicates as well if you remember back to like the days of when you were back in school and you had your uh, sticker album and stuff like that for those in the uk this is no different than doing swapsies in the playground so this is just a, a online market that enables people that have duplicates of the cards to try and sell those cards so that they can give them some funds and then go maybe go buy another pack or also you know at the same time it might also fund them buying a card that they don't have because they want the complete set so that's that's what kind of like this is all about people um, reselling the cards so if they've got duplicate cards they can just like flog those duplicate cards off so it helps fund them to get the whole collection so in relation to this as you can see here we can actually now put this in a few different marketplaces. Uh, you never used to be able to do this in public auction on PayPal or public gallery on PayPal either. These are new options. I only noticed yesterday that these op uh, PayPal had actually got involved in this actual Panini ecosystem. Previously up till that, uh, when I first used this site, they only had their own Panini wallet. Now the Panini wallet actually required you also to have a cryptocurrency in order to be able to even buying the cards, which actually meant that you would actually had to have a crypto wallet. So a crypto wallet, cryptocurrency, da, 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 as you can see where I'm going with this, it meant that you already had to be quite heavily involved in some way. I think with them now opening this up to PayPal, what that actually means is it's more publicly open. And when it's more publicly accessible, then it means the consumer buy-in is a lot more easier. So I can see why they've gone down this route. They still kept that other route open though, though for the cryptocurrency market. And you've got to bear in mind that at the moment, while they're opening the door to the wider market and making it a lot easier for the, the actual main consumer, it still won't have much interest in the actual outside, I think, community outside of crypto, mainly because most people won't know what NFTs actually are. Uh, and that's a, I think, slight problem that they will face with this this part but as adoption starts to pick up then it certainly opens up the door and makes it a lot lot easier for people and those expectations but on top of that one thing i did notice a few weeks back as well is paypal themselves now have a crypto function within paypal so if you haven't seen that yet that's something we will cover in the future weeks but for now let's carry on with our nft exploration um, one of the cards I do have, which I really love, is Israel Adesanya. Um, big fan favourite of him as well. He is literally the airbender, is uh, his like nickname. Um, but oh, he is just, wow, he's out there. <laughs> he's, a, he's a middleweight mixed martial arts, as you can see, as in it says in the title. But uh, this guy really does fight. Like, I've not seen any other fighter. The, the guy is, like, top dollar, um, what he does. I won't go for all of these because, as you see, I've got a couple of duplicates of those. <laughs> so I do need to probably think about reselling these to myself. But, you know, I'm just, like, a hoarder. So, you know, I get that from my parents. Tom Aspinall, another Brit from UFC. Uh, yeah. I don't think... The, the one card that I really want is Paddy Pimlet and... He's the one card I don't actually have yet. So, you know, I probably might have to buy him directly 
at some point because the whole reason why I started buying these is so I could get a card with him on it. So far, I've not been in luck, but you know, if I keep going at it, maybe I will, or maybe I should just buy one because it'll probably be just as cheap to just buy like a very rare one directly and then hold on to it till the end of time until or whenever. <laughs> you never know, they might, might be worth a lot more money down the line, but that's not why I'm doing it. I did it because I actually really am interested in this sport. And that's why I'd say with NFTs, NFTs are about having a collectible with the actual part of having some utility attached to it. So regarding that utility, that's what I want to show you next. So like I mentioned, UFC have actually started to embrace the actual big thing of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and NFTs themselves. Because in this latest show here between Sterling and Dillshaw, they actually started to actually have a lot of advertising and emphasis around that. Their main sponsor was VeChain, which is the now is the official sponsor of UFC. Now, the next thing here, we can see cryptocurrency even actually on the actual octagon itself. The octagon is that cage thing, by the way, of which they fight in. A lot of people even in the UK would have heard of crypto.com. They sponsor UFC, but they actually also have a physical card that allows you to use the transactions in retail stores, which which is really, really good. It's a good way of, of like starting to make cross boundaries between the consumer uh, and the kind of crypto world as such. And then we come to here. So the reason why I've snapped up this particular shot is because actually, if you notice in the bottom right hand corner, we have a QCR code. Now that QCR code is what dragged me uh, uh, like when this vote took place a couple of weeks back to the actual Panini website. Now their actual thing that they did with this and how the utility comes into this is because in order as a part of the sponsorship and part of the deal is they've actually said if you get a signature card you can actually go to their next event um, for free using just the NFT card. Now that's very similar to what we've explained previously in the third NFTs themselves could actually start to be other things. So think about like airline tickets for actually flying out, but then they can be used for something else. Now, in this occasion, it's that you can buy one of the actual NFTs and then you can actually then look to potentially, if you get one of these very rare cards, you'll be treated as a VIP at the event and get all type of goodies, I'm imagining, and all the other types of things that you get when you win a competition. So I think it's a really good way in a sport themselves actually embracing crypto and the benefits that you can actually get from that because you've got the authenticity that you know a particular person won it, which was completely random. So there can't be any kind of like, oh, well, that must the person must have been picked out and stuff like that because this has all been, you know, verified each person on it can be verified etc so going back to this now let's have a look at the virtual card itself so one thing i was going to show you was exactly how to put funds into this but because now that they've got paypal there doesn't really just seem any point now because people will easily be able to just put any money into this panini website the one thing I would say about the Panini NFTs are that it's actually within a closed ecosystem. So most NFTs, you will be able to export the NFT from the actual place that you buy it from and actually put it into your own NFT digital wallet. So my digital wallet, something called MetaMask. Now that is a crypto wallet uh, and within that crypto wallet, I can also hold any of my digital assets as well. Now, when we look at an NFT in a bit, you'll be able to see that we, you can actually see the owners and stuff like that previously that have ever owned that NFT as well. So you get a ledger that's actually attached within the actual NFT of firstly, who owns it right now, but any previous owners, even going back to the person who mined it. And the miner is the person who put the effort into creating that card on the actual blockchain. So just to give you a kind of an idea so when we look at this, we've got, I can show you all the different types of crypto wallets. Now, this is what this is my crypto wallet that I've got, which is why it says recently selected. But there's also tons of other different ones as well, including BitPay. Now, 
if you do put too much money into the Panini Ecoverse, what I will warn you is when it tries to give you that money back, it won't let you put it directly into your own wallet. It wants to put it through BitPay, which is another wallet. So you would have to move it to that wallet, then move it to your own wallet. And there are charges when you move it from these ecosystems as well. Um, so there will be a charge moving it to BitPay. I'm not too sure yet because I have not tried it out myself, but I'm not sure whether there would be a charge between BitPay and MetaMask. Um, there shouldn't be if I put it into Ethereum, uh, which is the coin that I generally use because that's where NFTs live. Uh, well, a lot of them do. Um, obviously, there can be private and networks like the Panini website, but generally you'll find a lot of them uh, of NFTs will actually exist within the Ethereum blockchain. But as we can see, there's loads of different types of crypto wallets. So in a future video, starting to explore some of these digital wallets and the actual pros and cons of each different types of wallet. So people can get an idea of what wallet might be best for them. I went for with MetaMask because that was recommended to me other than realizing that I didn't really know enough at this stage, so I felt it was best to go with people who knew a lot more about it than me, even though that I was more interested in actually just like what was the lowest cost. There were other ones cheaper, so probably as I start to explore this more with you guys, then I probably might end up changing crypto wallets as I understand it more. But at this time, I've played on the safe side and went with the recommendation of a friend. So we're here now and th this is the card that I'm looking to buy. This is from the set that I've been buying all my cards from. So let's go ahead and buy one. It's quite as simple. Now, like I mentioned previously, we do have the PayPal option now. Great, opens it up to everyone else. I've already put some money through my crypto wallets. So we'll go ahead and do that because uh, that means that I don't have to spend any or take any more money out of my own bank account. Effectively, it's already been done. And there we go, we're successful, it's coming through. So, we are gonna go ahead and open it. So, big food and open. And what have we got? Got anything mega special? I think we've got a, we've got a common, uncommon, uncommon, and a common. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Not even a rare. <laughs> So our first card is Augusto Saki. I don't think I've seen that person fight. <laughs> I could be wrong. Alexander Voskolansky. Nice. You can tell I'm not like super excited about that because I'm just like, yeah, I don't really know that well. Um, unless they're British. Alexander Velosky, not bad, and another common, and a base card. Yeah, so nothing there, majorly great. Um, yeah, I'm obviously going to be a bit disappointed because I didn't get the card that I'm really after, Paddy Pimlet, but Still, we've got some four new NFT cards that we just purchased on the blockchain for Panini. There is a plan later on at some point. Panini have mentioned that they are looking to open it up at just at this stage. They don't have it open. So, yeah, if you do buy any NFTs at the moment through uh, Panini, don't think you'll be able to move them into your own crypto wallet just yet because unfortunately they will only sit in their network at this stage. But hopefully in the future, it is something they are looking to open up. Uh, at least that's what it says on their website. So I just wanted to now take you through the actual, um, my mobile, because I was going to try and show you this on the actual website. But the thing is, is when I was trying to look into the details to show the full ledger on the NFT, it wouldn't actually show me the full part of the ledger. It would only show partial. I'm not sure exactly why it does that on the actual website, but on the mobile apps itself, it actually shows you the actual full details. So this particular card, one of the cards we just got, um, Augusto uh, Solanke. When we look at to the very bottom, we got this listing history. Now this listing history itself, 
it actually shows us the actual who it where it's come from so if you see the very bottom one it says genesis and genesis event with the two Benini digital at the very bottom is that card being mined and that happened back on the and this is american so make sure i get this right the 2nd of april 2022 i'm the time we've actually bought this was on the 6th of the 11th 2022 so the 6th of november that's today of 2022 and that's then come from panini and gone to me which that uh, those letters there stand for me essentially so yeah it won't show my name but if you know the person or their digital wallet then you could that's how you you verify that and some people actually do make their their wallets completely open so that they want to be completely transparent about the things that they actually buy one of those people is actually Gary Vee and he actually lets people be able to see things that he buys because he wants to show that he doesn't just flip stuff he actually buys it and holds on to it because there's a big I think a rumor or something like that and um, those big Gary Vee fans will know exactly what I'm referring to when I when I'm talking about that but yeah then we got the very top and we can see all the details the card which I can make it even bigger and zoom in and, and it gives you a bit of details about the actual person so he's Brazilian and obviously you can see some details there. Uh, it's card number seven as well from the top left hand corner. Yeah, it's one eight six out of eight nine nine. So the eight nine nine means like that's how many cards there are in this particular uh, color uh, or this co in the common stack. And out of that common stack, this is card one eight six. The, f the fighter is also a heavyweight. Oh, I wish it stopped moving. That's quite annoying. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few things about this Panini website that I find quite annoying, but they are improving it all the time. And like I said, I've come back into this website twice now, and like every time you seem to come into it, they've changed it, which is really quite annoying because you think you know where you're going, and then they've moved something. But certainly, do come and check this out. Really great fun to, to do all of this. I purchased my first NFT uh, through this, even though I was going to go buy some V Friends um, stuff, which is a big project that Gary V has set up. I'm really like stoked up for that. I've already bought some stuff from there, but I haven't bought any NFTs because they are so expensive. <laughs> but the trading cards you can actually buy online from eBay. So if you have a spare kind of like, well, almost $4,000. So in UK terms, that'd be about three and a half thousand based on currently where I think the exchange rate is. Yeah, so we're, we are talking quite a bit of money for those, but believe me, they, they are sought after stuff uh, and they are the price on them is only going to go up is all I can say. So flipping on them would be pretty good um, and certainly, you know, really worth that. So... And I hope you've really enjoyed the first look at our first NFTs. As you can see, it can be quite exciting about the possibility of like what you can get in these types of things. I've just shown one speck of what is possibly out there at the moment. And we've got to bear in mind at the moment, NFTs are still very, very new. They are still mainly used as a collectible. They aren't really used on the utility side yet, but and this is a big but, the UFC have showed that this is actually starting to change and companies like UFC are actually starting to use them in a utility form as well. So that means that they are actually doing it maybe the other way around. They're attaching their collectible to their utility and flipping it the other way around. But what you could find in the future is people do it the other way around and rather than buying your ticket to even go watch the fight there then what you'll actually be getting is you're purchasing an nft that nft will gain you access into the event and then on top of that you can then be entered into a competition 
but that also can also be a collectible because certain people like to buy ticket stubs apparently i say apparently because up until recently i have never really realized that although it kind of does make sense if you look at things like ebay and stuff like that there are loads of different little antiquities and little you know niceties that people like to sell on those places and i've been surprised myself when i've gone to sell something that i've like been like i don't want this anymore and i was just about to put it in the bed i thought should i pop it on ebay and then i've popped it on ebay only for it to be sold within a few days and i'm just like why would someone want that but then i think well you know waste not want not it saves the planet because it means it doesn't go into the rubbish tip and at the same time someone else is buying my stuff great win-win i get some money they get what they want everyone's happy so in the future what we could see with nfts is the second resale because at the moment when you buy something all it sits in is your actual phone see my iphone has tons of tons of tickets in it that like really like all these train tickets like see see, see these chain tickets i should actually just show you on the thing shouldn't i but certainly these train tickets are just like crazy now if on these train tickets instead of having that qcr code what we could actually have is an nft now the nft would be attached in the digital blockchain and when it's in the digital blockchain and it sits within my digital wallet now if an artist was to you know affiliate themselves with that make a little art piece that would you know put a nice picture in the background of that and it was it only existed for a short period of time for a certain journey or a certain flight or if you flew business class or first class with the actual train journey then one of the things they could do is attach this little art sticker with it now if they did it for an unknown artist say they were still at school or some other thing and they were up and coming artist then you know they might not have much but that artist down the line becomes you know big and famous like art banksy or something like that and then all of a sudden all their even their pre stuff before they became big would be worth something and people would be interested in some of the early art and some of the early projects they're involved in before they made it big so if you can see it's just like it's mind-blowing about nfts on all the different types of things that you can really see and do with these things please do subscribe to the channel because that helps me create more content and know that people are actually out there listening and firstly what you also want so do leave comments below and i promise i'll get back to you but also consider doing that in future pieces of content i do actually have an upcoming piece of content that i do want to do for you guys uh, and that was has already come from a special request so i will be doing that in the next couple of weeks but until then do enjoy and thank you very much